the fisherman called and he said, I'm watching that redhead in the troll pit. She's a natural killer. <laughs> and I, I thanked him and went back to the troll pit and I said to Lori, you know that fisherman behind us? He says, you're a natural killer. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs>it was always interesting. Um, I thought it was perfectly normal, but I mean, other boats in the fleet thought that when there were people up on the wheelhouse doing ballet, that it was kind of an odd boat. <laughs> um, you know, no, it was great. We, we homeschooled on the boat. They had well, we, we made the wheelhouse bunk into a, we put netting up, and um, that was just kind of the playpen, and um, we all lived there. <laughs> it was a little like being in jail, but no, it, I, I wouldn't say it was challenging, really. They learned to, to fish on the boat. First, they'd scrub bin boards, and then they'd do the dishes on the back deck in a pot of water, and yeah, I, they may have thought it was challenging. Yeah, so I'm Coral Pendle. I own a boat with my sister, and we grew up fishing, and I was one of the lucky ones that loved fishing when I was little. Um, at least when I was very little, you know. You <laughs> dissect all the fish, you got to see all these great places, hang out with your family all the time, forts and art projects, and, and a lot of fish dissection and eyeballs in the different bins, and if you were really lucky, you got your parents to fill the tote with some boiling water along with the, the hose so that you could swim around in the tote. And if you were extra, extra good, they'd put in one of those little, little baby fish that I think you're supposed to throw back. They threw back most of them, but if it was obviously gonna die, you know, it could go in the tote with us. And we'd swim around with it, and, and then it, it would turn upside down. So, we'd try and get it right side again. Um, so yeah, so it was fun. A, up until this point, probably about high school? middle Could school. High school? I, I think middle school, <laughs> when I had friends all of a sudden, and friends who got to do fun things in the summer, and, and go camping, and, and experience all these other things. And all of a sudden, fishing was the worst punishment there could possibly be. You couldn't talk to anyone, you couldn't call anyone. Um, I'd come back to town after a month or so, and. Everyone had done all these great things, and I'd missed it, and I hadn't met those people who'd just come to town. And, and so I think when I was 14, I told my parents, I'm not fishing anymore. I hate this. I never want to do this again. Um, I'm going to get a, a job on land. I'm going to live with somebody in town, and I'm, I'm not going. I'm never going again. And I got a job at a gallery and worked with tourists for one summer. All summer, <laughs> and uh, dealt with all of those great people who would come into the store, and uh, and I fished the next summer, and I never, <laughs> I never mentioned again uh, how much I hated fishing. In 2009, I was 21 and my sister was 17. Um, we decided to buy Linda Bankett's boat, the Morgan, and. Um, rather than fishing two separate boats and trying to pull that off, we thought it would be simpler to co-run and co-own the boat. Easy. We'll just, we'll just do it together, as if we were one skipper, right? Two skippers on the boat. And I think there are a few people in the audience who told me that that was not possible, that you cannot have two skippers on one boat. And we said, oh, no, we're, we're going to do that. And so since then, this, I guess, will be our fifth season fishing together. So I call over to visit with uh, Coral and Katie on the drag, and I, I've kind of deduced how they've worked this out. One of them is running the boat while the other one is sleeping. <laughs> um. One of the great things about running a boat with your sister that you grew up with all along is that we do things almost the same way. So I trust her to run the boat as much as she trusts me to run it. Um, 
I know exactly the point at which she'll wake me up if something goes wrong and vice versa. And so you can trust that person as much as you trust yourself. And so it's been really handy. Yeah, we, we probably sleep more than some others in the food. <laughs> at that moment, we're like, oh, one of us can go to, all right, it's me, my turn. Um, and so when I booked my flight, it was to Pelican. Well, I got off in Elfin Cove thinking that that was Pelican. <laughs> Only to have my bag continue on to Pelican. <laughs> so as soon as I got off the float plane, it didn't take me long before I realized, well, now, oh, she would like to find my bag. <laughs> and I said, so I, so I remember walking up the, the dock in this really tiny little community, and the, I went up to this person, I said, so, where do you catch a bus to Pelican? <laughs> How do you get there, man? <laughs> well, and they said, oh, no, 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 there'll be no bus catching, but you can catch a packer. And I said, well, what's a packer? And they said, well, you know, Paul Johnson's running the Noah there, and he's going to go out to Deer Harbor, and he's going to pick up some fish, and then he's going to go on to Pelican and go ask Paul Johnson. So I walked over to Paul Johnson and said, well, by the way, you know. So I was hoping to catch a ride with you to Pelican, and on the way, he told me about this guy that was looking for a deckhand, and was I interested? And I said, nah, 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 I'm here on vacation, man. You know, if there's anybody who's this guy up here I'd like to see, because at the end of the day, I was 23, wasn't it all about boys? <laughs> so I thought, yeah, maybe I'll see Ed West, that'd be groovy, but at the end of the day, I'm really just trying to catch up with my pack. And so, I, indeed, I jumped, I got off right then, and Ed said, yeah, we'll be going to Pelican in a couple of days, you can catch your bag then, and not a problem. I said, great, I'll spend a couple, three days on the back deck of the boat. And I was riding around, and on day three, when we were heading to Pelican, I'll never forget it. I looked out the back deck, and it was covered with fish. And I looked at those guys in the cockpit, and I turned to Sid, and I said, do you mean to say you make your living like this? <laughs> and from then on, I knew. I got to Pelican, I picked up my pack, I called my boss in uh, Tektronix, and I never went back. I'm down sleeping, probably with my boots on, on my sleeping bag, and, and so I get this yell, and it's Steve Amos, and he's like, get up, we're in them. And so I go charging up onto deck, and the whole back deck is full of halibut, all the checkers, and you kind of have to walk on the, you know, the, the checker boards to get to somewhere where you can start cleaning fish. Well, I've never cleaned a halibut before, and, and the thing I didn't realize, I mean, being a female might be a, a handicap sometimes, but being left-handed on a halibut boat with right-handed skipper, I mean, right-handed everybody. They all go, oh, yeah, you just got here. And I go, okay, and try to figure it out. And so what I ended up doing for quite a while was turning the halibut over and cleaning it on the other side. And so I'm working away, and it, you know, it kind of works, and I'm learning, getting a little faster, but we were slow, and we cleaned, and we cleaned, and we cleaned. There were a lot of fish. And so, Steve Amos, you know, who a lot of you probably know back from the old days around here, he's, he's back there and we're cleaning and, and so he gets this fish and he, he pulls it up on the hatch and starts in and he looks kind of puzzled and then I see him, he throws it back down off the, off the hatch and grabs another one and pulls it up. Okay, that's kind of odd. And so I get ready and I grab my next fish and throw it up on the hatch and it's backwards. It was a left-handed halibut. And it was like, oh, finally, I get it. This is how you clean a halibut. And, yeah, but it's the only left-handed halibut I've ever seen. And I don't know, there, on the slideshow, there was a picture of me with two halibuts, and one of those was a left-handed halibut. One event that made me decide to go back to grad school, actually, and become an advocate, I um, was fishing near a trawl boat. Um, we were up off of, I think we were west of Yakutat, but anyway, there was a, a trawler that fished near us and there was just dead fish floating on the surface everywhere. Um, and I wanted to figure out a way to do something about that and thought to be a more effective advocate for the resource in the fishing industry, I should go to grad school. So I did and came back and um, Soon after that, decided to, well, I guess it was a year after I graduated, I decided to buy 
my first boat. And I don't know, I think it was just years of people encouraging me to do that and say, telling me, you know, you could run your own boat if you want to, that I decided to go for it and do that. And folks, just so you know, what a formidable advocate for the fishers is trawling. Ground fish trawling is prohibited in the federal waters of southeast Alaska because of Linda Benkin. I, I fish for two reasons. One of them is because I love my six months off every year. And the other one is a story about why I love to fish. And I was fishing in uh, Point Adolphus, and it was in August. And the currents and the tide and the time of year set phosphorescence in really thickly there. The phosphorescence just turns everything green. Where you can sit on the bull rail and you can look into the water and you can see fish swim by because they're so, they're so illuminated by the phosphorescence. And it was one of those very rare cold nights, moonless, stars everywhere, to the point where you really couldn't, disti couldn't distinguish the horizon. The water met the sky. And I could see the anchor chain all the way down, and I heard this whale blow. And I thought, wow, I really want to see the, I want to see the spout, you know, how do I, I want to see if that happens, right? So I hear the whale moving the shore, moving along the shoreline, and moving along the shoreline. And sure enough, I didn't ever see the spout, but what I saw was the whale. And the whale moved through the water, causing its entire body to be completely outlined in this phenomenal phosphorescence. And I couldn't tell the sea from the sky. And there was this whale floating in the universe. And that's one of the reasons I fish. Yeah.